Hello my wonderful Sagittarius, welcome to Earth Rose Tarot, thank you so much for being here. This is going to be a general tarot love reading for Sagittarius in Sun, Moon, Rising or Venus. It is a general reading, so it won't resonate fully with every single person who comes across it. Please always do take what does resonate and leave what doesn't for somebody else. This is a timeless reading, it is for whenever you do come across it. When I'm saying this is how you feel about someone, this is how they feel about you or anything that I'm describing in the reading, if it's resonating for you just with the roles reversed, please do go ahead and reverse it. That's absolutely fine. Okay, my lovely Saggies, I'm going to dive straight into a spread for you. We're going to be looking at you and the person who's coming through in the reading and what's going on with the connection for you. Lots of specific questions and I will get as much detail as I can for you in the reading. Okay, so the top six cards for my lovely Saggies, please. If you're new to the channel, then huge welcome. Thank you so much for trying me out. I really appreciate it. And if you're a returning subscriber, and I know I have, have a wonderful Saggy crew following, um, thank you so much for all your amazing support. I'm so happy to have you here. So the top six cards for Sagittarius, please. And the person who's coming through in their love reading today. For Saggy. All right, there we go. Well, this is not really a spoiler. First card of this reading today, Saggy, the first one I've seen, and it's in the position of how you're feeling about this person. And it's the lover's card, which is pretty strong for a love reading. Let's carry on, shall we? Okay. Wow. Actually, I mean, it's it's the very start. So let's see. I never like to say too much too early on, because obviously we can go a whole different way with the clarifiers. But I mean, from a base point, this looks lovely very positive there might be some obstacles which i can also see are going to come up and we'll, we'll obviously dive into those but generally very positive haven't looked at the bottom of the deck yet please don't be the devil or the seven of swords no i don't think it would be it's the two of pentacles okay let's see what's going on here so i would say this two of pentacles it is giving me the sense of an overall energy here of um there's change going on in your love life from you transitioning from one way of being, uh, one, uh, you know, way of existing when it comes to your love life to uh, a new, a new way. Um, now, what I'm seeing is you're kind of in that kind of middle phase between one chapter and the next. There might be some, um, yeah, still seeing an element of challenge here, maybe about some um, conflicting either emotions about what's going on here or conf conflicting uh, opinions about different subjects between you and this person there might be a few things that need to be ironed out basically whether it's internally or between the two of you it could be some things that the two of you clash over but they're very minor and it can be worked through um, is what I'm getting so far uh, but wow, I definitely see major change manifesting for you here in your love life. Um, and there will be forward movement and progress here, which is looking very positive. Wow. <laughs> yeah. The other end of the deck is the Ace of Pentacles. So it's an, it's a new start here. Hmm, there, I think there might be some, a little bit of need for courage to take this opportunity uh, take a risk on actually grasping this opportunity that's presenting itself. Um, and it might be because there may have been... Obviously, I'm sure we've all had people in our romantic history that have caused us to have a bit of... Well, some people more than others, but to have a little bit of trust issues. You know, there's people who have um, deceived us, which could, you know, make you more more hesitant as you, you know, as we all get older, we get a little bit more gun shy I think is the phrase um but all right let's let's carry on or well, there could be some things that haven't actually been addressed that are 
could be uh, simmering underneath because someone hasn't kind of vocalized them or the conversations hadn't been had yet but maybe someone is is thinking or well, maybe I'll just leave that information out but so that could be the there could be some information like coming to light about this person and that is causing like a bit of a ooh I don't know I'm not so sure about that or vice versa of course um, but it feels like something you can work through and it, the emphasis is far more on something something serious happening here and progressing there's just I'm getting the sense of some things to iron out along the way so that's not perfectly natural and uh, let's get the next layer for your reading if you're new here I get three layers for the spread using three different decks and then I will go through the, the spread with you of course and clarify it with further decks if needed so the top six cards again for my lovely Saggies please Mm. just uh, as a side note I just got as well that some maybe the other person in this connection could be questioning whether this like getting into a relationship with with you or anyone is going to impact them being able to have fun this could be someone who likes their own their own time their own space or you know the freedom to kind of even do their own hobbies or see their friends or that kind of thing it could be someone who's uh thinking oh this could be like curtailing my enjoyment of the things i like to do you know, which bring me happiness for my life uh, um is that going to come to an end uh if i'm in a relationship but as i said that's a side note all right Wow. Okay, okay. Okay. At the bottom of the second deck, Saji, we have the Five of Swords. Okay, underneath the Five of Swords is the Five of Wands and then the Six of Swords. See, that, this Five of Swords card is kind of depicting Five Swords pointing down into, you know, down to the ground let's just say um and there is a snake woven in between them it's it's depicting the idea of things that have not been communicated because the swords are pointing down they're not pointing up so these are things that haven't been said now either this these are things that someone is omitting on purpose because it's almost like there might be another influence telling them that they can't talk about these kind of things or they can't share this information um, themselves or it's because they are avoiding talking about these things because they feel like it's going to lead to conflict but that being said with this five of wands underneath this is depicting a two-headed snake so I kind of get the sense that this is someone I would say it's probably the other person in the connection but we'll see and obviously if it's reversed just reverse the roles um, this is giving me a sense that someone is try is not sharing some information which needs to be mentioned maybe up front before this relationship progresses any further because of the influence of someone else I'm getting that more I don't normally say that about this card but it, it instinctively that was what I was felt when I looked at it and then to see the five ones underneath this is almost like someone it can talk about being a little bit two-faced but it may also be talking about trying to keep two parties happy in terms of there's someone who's saying you can't tell Sagittarius for example about about this these things but they also want to for things to go well with you Sagittarius but let's see See, even in this Six of Swords card that was next, which is the progression on from the Five of Swords, see how this person is moving away from a snake that's following them in the water. I don't know if this, this is details about an ex. 
um, or someone that they're trying to leave behind them. Or it could be like something in their past that they don't really want to um, be completely open and honest about. They kind of just want to be able to not pretend it never happened, but just to uh, leave that behind them. It doesn't, you know, after that, Six of Swords is the star and then the Knight of Pentacles. This is someone who's, I get a sense, this is someone who wants to, like if they made mistakes in their past, which I'm sure we all have in one way or another, they want to leave that in their past and they're more focused on going forward and grabbing their dreams. And also it's like they don't want that holding them back from uh, having their wish fulfillment now and maybe even having to face what happened in the past if that could um, sabotage the, this opportunity. It, they don't want it can, to still be a factor in their present, is kind of what I'm getting. It's like whatever happened, they feel that doesn't define them right now. They've maybe been through it and they have, you know, learnt things from those whatever went on here. It's kind of what I'm getting. I don't know if this was someone who um, cheated on somebody in their past, something like that. And they feel like, it's almost like the, they feel like the more they talk about that kind of thing, the more they give it, um, they give it value, they give it like, a, it means more. It's almost like someone, not so much denial, but just not wanting that to, um, that isn't their identity. They don't want it to, you know. What's the word? I can't think of the word. Um, yeah, let's carry on anyway. I'm sure it'll come back to me. So I'm going to get your third layer for the spread, Sagittarius. Define them. See, it finally it comes back. The word finally comes back, but it's just a bit delayed sometimes. Um, they don't want their past to define their them now for their present and their future. So that's kind of what I'm getting. But let's carry on. Get the third layer for Sagittarius, please, for their spread. This does feel like something relatively new from what I can see so far. All right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. All right, the bottom of the third deck. Sadly, we have the Magician. Um, Major Arcana, to, wow, underneath the Magician is Judgment. Yeah, I told you from the like the very first deck that change is manifesting in your love life. Definitely. This is all that combination for me also talks about a significant decision. Now underneath that is the six of pentacles and the two of swords. So again, it could be something to do with, you know, to be able to move forward, to progress here, if you want to go after your wish fulfillment. This is, could be you or the other person. Um, if you want to leave your past in your past, then you're going to have to leave that past there. It, you can't continue to give to both situations with that Six of Pentacles. And this this is... The, the Two of Swords can talk about, you know, trying to put something off, or a little bit of denial, or, you know, someone has needs to choose between two different situations, but... Um, it's a difficult decision. It's often something that someone doesn't want to have to deal with. It can be a bit avoidant energy as well. But what is what is manifesting is the universe going, sorry, you're going to have to make a choice. Like, you can't be one foot in, one foot out in uh, going forward. It's either you're in or you're not with that combination. Um, and there could be someone still hanging on to this person who still is still demanding or 
expecting them to keep giving them attention, energy, effort, but that with that five of wands I was saying with the two headed snake, it's almost like that person is in direct conflict with being able to give to this with you, Sagittarius. Um, but the thing is, whoever is in this kind of two of swords place, or they're not going to be for much longer, but they've been trying to stay in that place. Um, underneath that is the page of swords and the two of cups. So that's someone who has been observing, I would say you, Saji, uh, observing you, thinking about you, imagining life with you and thinking that the two of you are very much aligned, very much on the same page. You are kindred spirits. It could be why someone was also struggling to, you know, I said briefly about a side note about someone wondering if they it would, they would not be able to do what, you know, they do at the moment, which they enjoy. Uh, I was like seeing friends, I think I said as an example, um, or spending time with friends. I mean, if they have less, slightly less independence because in a relationship obviously it's expected that you also consider your partner's feelings and needs and giving them attention that kind of thing so it could be it i don't know if this person is still spends time seeing an ex or someone who was a like a friends with benefits or something and they still enjoy you know their company but so it could be a case of maybe this person's been avoiding making a decision about getting into a relationship with anyone because they would have to let that go, maybe, you know, respectfully for their new partner. So let's get into the spread, Sagittarius. So how you're feeling about this person? You have got the lovers, the six of pentacles and the emperor. So... Um, the Lovers is Gemini's Major Arcana, the Emperor is Aries Major Arcana. Um, <laughs> the Lovers, in as the first card for how you're feeling about them, tells me that you feel this very strong connection to this person. Um, and obviously the Lovers card is kind of self-explanatory in terms of the romantic pull, the chemistry, the passion, the affection that you feel for this person. And it's, it's telling me with the lover's card that it's also, it's usually reciprocated with the lover's energy, usually. Um, because especially with this lover's card, it's two people who feel that um, the energy that runs between the two of them. You could even feel like even when you're apart from this person, you're still connected to them. Now, with this combination, it is, I'm wondering if you feel like that when in this Six of Pentacles card, there's two fish here and one of the fish is being um, given four of the Six of Pentacles and the other fish is being given two of the Six of Pentacles. So there is an imbalance in terms of priorities or, you know, in terms of the share of effort. Now, it's kind of giving me the sense that you feel like you want this person to make you their priority, like make you top of their list. If they have other people or other situations demanding or expecting their attention and their efforts, they maybe you already feel like they already do put you first and that you are the priority with this. Well, I'll get some clarification in seconds. It could go either way, either that you do feel like they treat you like that already, or it's a case that you want, you, you want them to make you the, their priority with the emperor. Um, whether you're male or female, the emperor is a divine masculine energy. And it's either telling me that, uh, you feel like this person is, very significant and could be someone like maybe someone that you have a great deal of respect for that you feel could be um the divine masculine in your life um a very long-term partner a, potentially a father to your children um you feel like they are someone that you could rely on and grow with 
and um, yeah, either that or the other element, if you're resonating as the emperor here, it could be that you feel like you are ready to give all of that, that I just described to this person. So let's get a little clarification. Um, tell me more about the Six of Pentacles in particular. Why is this here? For how Saji is feeling. Okay, we've got the Ace of Wands card came out. So tell me about the Six of So I, I do really feel like it's something relatively new here for you, Saj. Uh, or this could be someone that you're going to be meeting in the near future. Uh, that... Okay, so what... Mm -hmm. So the Fool with the Page of Pentacles came out, which is someone, you know, the Page of Pentacles is the start of something, and it is normally starts on like a friendly basis, so this could be someone that you've got to know um, platonically before it went to a romantic place, but it's also taking a risk on um, sending a message, on reaching out on a page of pentacles can also be like an invitation for a date for uh, for an, a gathering or um, a gift even so why what's this six of pentacles about <laughs> the magician fell out and the judgment card is at the bottom of the deck oh you know like the magician and judgment that were at the bottom of the third deck the same cards so, Magician, oh. wow, um, <laughs> this could be someone that you feel is a little bit, um, has been hesitant to approach you, Saji, or is a little bit, um, a little bit shy, a little bit, maybe you feel like they've been holding back from you um, and they haven't been uh, taking a chance. You could be trying to manifest them, just say something to me kind of thing, or, you know, just, just try, just ask me out. <laughs> like, that's kind of what I'm getting, because um, what came out was, on top of the Magician, we have the Sun card, and the star card, just covering up the star there, um, which is, you know, manifesting your wish fulfillment, your desires, your happiness, like this, if this person would take this step towards you, it would make you very happy. Um, well, on top of the ace of wands, we have the nine of wands, which is that this could be someone who has, you, you might know, they've gone through some rough breakups in, uh, recently, or not breakups plural, but like a, a rough breakup recently, or they've had a bit of a rough ride in some way, and you feel, or they're just, they've, they. this is someone who may, might lack a bit of confidence in the romantic realm. They might not be a, um, a Casanova or someone who has great success with the, you know, the people that they're attracted to. And then the four cards came out together, which was the Chariot, the Knight of Pentacles, the King of Cups, and the Justice card. So strong Cancer energy there. Um, the King of Cups is Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, but we've got Cancer and Libra with the Major Arcana. So, but this is... Um, just tell me what the Justice card is here, because that also talks about um, equal, like, a fair... fair um, split you might feel like you want to show this person that you're you're in in this in a very fair way like you um want this as much as they do or also if they have had to um previously kind of give more of themselves uh or that oh this is you if i maybe you understand from experience or, or otherwise, that someone's had to give more than they've received in relationships before. And you kind of want to show this person, especially with that emperor energy, that you're not going to take advantage. And in fact, you want to make them your top priority as much as you would hope that they make you their top priority. That's basically what I've got 
coming from your feelings here, Sag. Um, so, how they're feeling about you. We have the Prince of Cups, the Knight of Cups, and the Fool. So, in the first deck with the, the where the Prince of Cups has come out, um, you don't get pages or knights in that particular deck. You get male or uh, female equivalent of each suit. So, there's prince and princess of each suit. So, the Prince of Cups could be could be the Knight of Cups, basically. So it's almost like I feel like you've got the Knight of Cups twice and then the Fool in how this person's feeling about you. Now, the Knight of, uh, the Prince of Cups here is someone who, uh, it is a Scorpio-specific energy in this deck. This person doesn't have to be a Scorpio, but um, there is a Scorpion detailed on the Prince of Cups kind of clothing. Um, but this is someone, because you see the way he's like shrouded in this kind of purple hue. It's almost like a, um, a Knight of Cups that is effectively um, hiding or n not openly expressing their, how they have maybe caught feelings for someone. They are shrouded in a bit of mystery. Obviously, Scorpio is very mysterious. That's why probably he's got a Scorpio on his vest. Um, but it's definitely a... Um, it makes sense here because the Knight of Cups in the second deck that I used is someone who is far more, they've got their, uh, they actually carry a harpoon and the harpoon is pointed to um, the constellation, which could also, you could think about the star. Again, I'm getting the sense of wish fulfillment and, you know, eyes on the prize of they want to make this happen with you because they may have had feelings for you for some time with this this first Prince of Cups NG um, and just haven't come out and said it or um, acted on it as yet. Now, it doesn't mean that this is like, um, I'm not getting situationship or someone, an ex for you, not so much. Uh, obviously, take it as it resonates, but I'm strong, more strongly getting this is would would be a new ro uh, romantic connection for you, Saji. Um, but I feel like even so, this person's had some brewing feelings for you for a while. It has progressed within them for their feelings to aiming very true, fast and true at you. Um, and they feel ready to take that leap with the fool. Um, I think things have probably like developed within them in terms of their feelings. Maybe also um, there was a time when they felt like they could just, uh, you know, even if they felt a certain way, they would just kind of uh, leave that in the shadows, you know, push it down, not acknowledge it, not verbalize it and not certainly not act upon it. Maybe they could, there was a time when they thought they could just feel this way about you, Saji, but that, that, that's all, that's as far as it's going to go. Um, but this is progressed to them, like this Knight of Cups in the second deck is someone moving on a ship as well. So this is like storming through the water. Things are, have stepped up and now it's got to the point of them ready to actually take a risk. Which funnily enough is kind of what you're hoping to manifest that they do. So um, how are they viewing you, Sagittarius? We have got, yeah, I think it's going to get a little bit dicey here we've got the three of wands the nine of swords and the devil so the devil is capricorn energy but not all capricorns are devils um but this see the three of wands on its own this is uh someone viewing you as part of your their future the the two of you having a future together this three of wands card is showing someone who is not waiting which can be a part of the three of wands energy not waiting necessarily in vain or for something that they're questioning if it's ever going to turn up this is someone very like almost celebrating what is about to come like they're so excited for the future that they can now visualize or um, believe to be happening but then we have the nine of swords there's the fly in the ointment this is um someone who it's almost like getting really excited about the future um of, of something that they maybe at one point they thought oh no this that's that's a pipe dream oh, i can't i'm not going to act on that but now it's like oh this could actually happen i could actually really get what i want here and then the anxiety hits with the nine of swords and the devil now this is kind of 
is reminding me of what I was seeing with the overall energy at the bottom of the decks, where this is someone, as much as they want to, the Three of Wands talks about the future as well, it's, it's not looking back, it's looking forward. But then there's like this creeping stress that comes in, which I feel it's about, um, it's either about an influence here, which is maybe something that has sabotaged their previous relationships. It would be like something coming up from the dregs or from them that always comes up and always ruins things. Um, now, I do see a little bit of this person that their approach to whatever this shadow energy is for them, their approach might be to just try and ignore it and just try and move on from it without acknowledging it or processing it or facing up to it, let's just say. But remember with that Six of Sword card is that if that is their approach, that snake, which funnily enough, in a different deck this that's come out, the devil is depicted as a snake. The snake follows them. So it's it's something that this person is aware of and it would be like if they have, I'm not saying this is necessarily the case, if they have a, a real jealous, uh, a real issue with jealousy and it uh, it's always, it's okay at first in a new relationship and then that old green, green-eyed monster descends or comes up, whatever you want to think about it, um, and sabotages the relationship by pushing the partner away, by like by constantly getting being suspicious, and it turns into control issues. And you know, that's just an example. It's not necessarily that, um, but it's how they're viewing you. Is they are both excited, but also scared at the same time that maybe patterns are going to repeat, or that they will get they will be unable to escape the same kind of torment, maybe mental torment or the torment of a specific figure or something in their life that is going to creep back in just as they get excited about moving forward again. Um, this could be someone who struggles with anxiety and as much as they, you know, it's an and haven't, you know, they're not at a place where they can manage highly functioningly manage their anxiety. So it could be that they might even self-sabotage uh, relationships by if they start getting to a place where they're actually happy and they get what they want, there's that fear of losing that that starts to come in and sort of like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, can you give me one or a couple of cards on the devil? What is this devil that they are worrying about I don't I'm not getting the, like the other thing is they are this is how they're viewing you so of course the other thing is they could be thinking oh I'm really excited about this but what if this turns into be the same kind of there's an element of toxicity in this relationship that I experienced before and it's going to be the same old story. So, uh, you know, is this going to be another karmic relationship, for example, with that devil? I wasn't getting that so much. Um, but, uh, oh, look at that. So let me just get one more. What is this devil? Okay, so what came out the first card was the sun. That's when I said, look at that, because the sun is a lot of happiness and um, it's like reward for your hard work. It's relief after struggle. It's, you know, the sun coming out and feeling vibrant and alive and like, all of that abundance in many ways. Um, and I'm asking, what are they worried about here? And that's certainly giving me an element of they're worried about actually the happiness that they would want actually happening what and then it what being taken away from them um what's this devil just give 
Maybe one more. I don't know if this person went through a divorce uh, in particular that um, So, because what I've got here is the Empress with the Six of Swords. Again, generally lovely energy. And the Chariot and Justice. This is like they are, what they're freaked out about, effectively, is moving forward with um, the Divine Feminine, who's epic, absolutely fantastic catch, and everything potentially they could hope for to find in a person to have all the happiness that they have been looking for and wanting. The chariot is like a sense of victory and success and uh, overcoming obstacles and coming out on top effectively of difficulties. The justice is kind of, this is fair and it's right that they have all of this. So what are they worried about? <laughs> the tower and then the moon at the bottom of the deck I I'm strongly getting a sense that what they're worried about is having all of this planning this future getting hopeful about this actually being a reality and then it all crumbling and all going to shit basically um maybe they experienced that kind of the rug being pulled out underneath their feet before okay let's move on uh what is their current situation saji we have got the eight of swords the queen of wands and the queen of swords so the Eight of Swords in their current situation, obviously I saw it from the, like the start, and this is why I was feeling like there are going to be, there's something that this person might be overthinking here, or creating problems before they've actually experienced the problems, and just kind of expecting there to be problems. Um, now the Eight of Swords can also be two people who aren't on the same page about something, and that is causing issues with understanding each other. Um, but it feels more, it feels more on this person's side that they are creating, um, creating these problems in their head. Now with the, the two queens, it could well be that there are, um, that Queen of Swords can be an ex, it can be um, an ex-wife, uh, in particular, because the Queen of Swords can represent a divorcee, it doesn't have to be. Um, a Queen of Swords in, in this deck especially is just depicting someone who's very scorned, bitter, and angry, and feels like they've been wronged. Now, I, I'm seeing this one of two ways. Either this person's current situation is they are stuck or they are kind of stopping, like they're, they are self-sabotaging right now because of experiences they've had where someone that they really wanted and seemed to be um, very attractive to them with that Queen of Wands energy and very um, like someone that they really desired did a pull the, the switch on them and turned out to be very harsh, cold, unfeeling, um, uh, maybe controlling themselves or just unsympathetic. And, uh, you know, it became something horrible, like with that, uh, that combination. It could be that. Or it's um, their situation is that they're, they're stuck in their head thinking, oh, this might be impossible because obviously you can be the queen of one, Saji, because that's fire energy, Aries, Aries, Saj. It could be that they can't reconcile having this with you whilst also they've still got a queen of swords energy in their life, which could be the devil as well. This could be someone who would try and sabotage potentially a new relationship for them let's see what's going on here 
Tell me about these two queens. In this person's situation. Mm. Okay, so the world came out. And at the bottom, on top of the, the Queen of Swords, on the bottom of the deck is the Six of Pentacles. It feels more like an ex that they still um, potentially feel tied to or that they still give money to or support to in some way. Tell me about the Queen of Swords in particular then. Because the world also suggests that the chapter has come to an end. Six of Pentacles can talk about um, division of assets. Let's see. Tell me about the Queen of Swords. Yeah. Yep. Six of Cups comes out with the Seven of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. This could be someone that this person has children with, potentially from a previous relationship. Um, but <laughs> underneath the Seven of Pentacles is the Queen of Swords. Um, this is someone who, the Queen of Swords here in this person's situation, I'm getting this is someone who still feels like they have, um, they are owed something from this person's savings or what they earn. The Queen of Swords is there like, yeah, but a little bit of that, that is owed to me. Um, maybe because they have children, this could be, um, is it alimony, is that the right word? Or child support, whichever. Um... So tell me about the Queen of Wands. Now with that Five of Swords, and I was saying there might be some, the, the obstacle here might be the fact that they haven't let you in on this, uh, that this is actually occurring. Why is the Queen of Wands here? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> the Empress came out for what I was asking, why is the Queen of Wands here? Um, it's just, just talking about how they're viewing you as essentially you could be everything that they've been looking for here, but something's going to try and ruin it. So, um, or some, some kind of toxic influence that's either as case of self-sabotage or someone external kind of watching and want like potential with the, Maybe even, um, this feels a bit like you can't tell your new, your new girlfriend or boyfriend about this because if you do, blah, 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 it's kind of, I'm getting a touch of, it's blackmail will probably be too strong, but a little bit of manipulation potentially from the devil that's still trying to linger in their life maybe even follow them around like yeah you can go yeah you go yeah have a new relationship i will always be with you <laughs> that's kind of what i'm getting um and when after the empress came out the king of wands came out so king and queen of wands obviously is a match um divine counterparts and also both fire energy so the eight of swords let's get one on that this person's current situation so when I say that about the King Queen of Wands, what it's telling me is that, yes, it was the it was the case that this person is stuck in that prison of oh I don't know how this is going to work, how is if this is actually impossible because they do have you here with the Queen of Wands who is a a match for them and it's you, they think you're incredible with the Empress there but they also have a Queen of Swords still in their life. So what's the Eight of Swords? Just give me one on that. Strength in reverse with the Seven of Wands at the bottom of the deck. This person needs to stand up for themselves, but they feel like they're, they're questioning whether they are strong enough to do that and kind of doubting their ability. They are, they I was got that from the start and I think you're a little bit aware of it. This person might lack a bit of self-confidence or the the assertiveness to stand up for themselves in situations where where people take advantage or take the piss basically um and it's not that they're they might just not be good with confrontation or um saying no to people and and because they might also always be thinking about the the confrontation that's going to follow 
or you know what that person might do to them but uh, so the eight of swords here is because this person uh, is feeling like they're not strong enough to stand up for themselves probably with this queen of swords energy okay so let's move on um now the action that they're most likely going to take towards you next saji we have the sun the four of pentacles and the star now bearing in mind again i'm seeing repetition in cards because uh when i was clarifying how you feel about them um with the fool and the page of pentacles it was like and the the magician that came out in terms of what you're you're hoping to manifest in terms of this person taking the risk on starting something with you um that manifestation for you represented was represented by the sun and the star so a lot of happiness and a lot of wish fulfillment and this two of those cards are here in terms of the action that they are going to be taking towards you next most likely now it is um tempered by the four of pentacles being in the middle in between the two uh so this four of pentacles card i'm gonna like speak about a little bit more than the major arcana because i feel like those are a little bit self-explanatory this one is interesting because this four of pentacles it four of pentacles we think of uh can be many different meanings but often involves kind of holding back and um for the sake of security this is a very unique four of pentacles because it is um it's quite like a machiavellian character rep like represented by this rabbit here who is getting out of dodge basically um it ca can be someone who is you know if they are leaving one person who does you know in a in a in a harsh or just uh, an underhanded way they leave with as much of the the family silver that they can gather up into their suitcase before they get out of there so it can be a bit of like a, a smash and grab energy or a bit of a user that kind of thing now i haven't got that energy from your person at all through this reading but what i feel like it's saying here is that their action because they they do keep giving me this thing of like they don't want to face the snake that is following them um they just want to get out of there it's quite a similar energy of just they want to like if this was it can also talk about you know if this person who isn't still in their life this queen of swords and let's just call her for now it could be a male as well in real life but whoever this is the, what i was getting a sense of a bit of blackmail like you can't tell sagittarius about the deal that we have going on here because I'll make things very difficult for you. It could be that that is, would impact, for example, their money. We did see the Queen of Swords kind of feeling like she had some entitlement to this person's savings or investment with the Seven of Pentacles. So this is kind of giving me that their action, for the sake of their happiness and for the sake of going after their wish fulfillment and to live their life and be happy. And because the star can also be like... Um, a lighthouse in a storm it's like the only thing that's kind of their not only their focus on but their their goal to get out of the shitty choppy waters that they've been going through in the dark and they finally found their lighthouse in you saji if that means that they just take as much as they can carry from uh their previous situation so that they can get away and get, come towards you and that's what they're going to do it's kind of a little bit of um they'd rather lose out a little bit rather than let this person dictate that they can't come towards you does that make sense um so but with the fact it, obviously that is the minor arcana it is bookended on either side by the sun and the star which are two major energies the sun and the star energy is not going to be stopped by the four of pentacles in I, in any way even if i'm kind of getting like a positive spin on this four, four of pentacles this time but even if i wasn't sun the star trump the four of pentacles anytime so tell me a little bit the action this person's going to be taking towards saji in the near future mm-hmm person's making plans i'm sorry the deck split in like four different ways 
All right, I'll show you the everything. So first card that came out, the Three of Wands, the future. That's bearing in mind I was talking about that card with how they're viewing you as well. And it's that's their only focus. They don't want to think about the past and they don't want to, the past to dictate their future. So they're making plans. Um, the other card, another card that fell out was the Eight of Wands. That is forward momentum. Serious energy of progression. I was getting from the very start for you, Saji. So things will be moving forward in this connection. Obviously, it does talk about communication flying back and forth as well. And then the, the deck split in like three ways. So I'll show you the bottom of each section. We have the Seven of Pentacles, which I was just talking about, funnily enough. We have the Eight of Cups. And then the Emperor. So it's Aries Major Arcana. Now, th what this is kind of telling me it's like because the Ace of Pentacles in this deck is someone kind of, um, they haven't actually got up and started walking away from their their Eight of Cups to find their Nine of Cups. They're just kind of thinking about walking away. I feel like there is an energy here of this person reviewing the fact, like, what what's more important and also that we may be reviewing their priorities, reviewing whether it's worth staying where they're at and I was just saying about how I think the the sun and the star is going to be the energy is more important so it's almost like a confirmation that their action they're going to take is do I stay where I'm at and do I lose this future that they are very excited about for the is this worth it is it worth me and we just saw the queen of swords like leaning over the person's shoulder and looking at their seven of pentacles and it's almost like they're reviewing it going is it worth it just to stay stagnant here for this and then i think it's a no it's not worth it because i want this future and i'm going to make moves and also the emperor does does have some sort of authority of their life there are a major authority the emperor so I think it's gonna they're going to make a choice for their own life here it's saying now with the four of pentacles it does kind of make sense because from what i've seen from this person they if they could they would just try and um avoid confrontation let's just say so this four of pentacles kind of makes sense because they in if they were someone else which they're not but if it was someone else then they they might take the approach of fighting the queen of swords face on and trying to get more out of their seven of like to take their seven of pentacles with them but this person is very much like they don't want to address it they are potentially scared of the outcome of of confront confronting this queen of swords so they're just going to take well, all right fine like, maybe i make a loss here but at least i get away basically so what's going to be happening between you and this person going forward, Saji? I, here I would say the next few weeks, the next month from when you come across the reading, but that will be slightly different for everyone. So we have the Temperance card, funnily enough, which is your Major Arcana, the Four of Swords and the Page of Wands. Just covering her up a little bit, but there you go. And you also see the fact that the, temp the Temperance card came out from the same deck that the Sun came out. And um, obviously we have the sun here in the action they're going to take towards you next. And the sun is in the background of the temperance card as well. So whilst they're in terms of their action, I feel like this is also, sorry, step back a little bit. The sun here is also saying that their course of action, if right now they're a little bit up in their head, they feel a little bit trapped. I think that it's going, they're going to receive this kind of illumination and it's going to be very clear what action they are going to take basically it's it's going to get crystal clear but then because also <laughs> put my teeth in um and what's going to be happening you see the same sun is now in the background here it is a little bit tempered by clouds but it's just saying that um what is happening the outcome is a result of the action it's like a, it's um the progression here so in terms of what's going to be happening Temperance tells me it could be, and especially with the Four of Swords, it could be a little bit softly, softly catchy monkey, a little bit, um, because the Temperance is, is 
you giving to this situation, Saji, the other person giving to this, but it is, um, and it is a card of harmony, but it is also, you know, there's no need to rush. We can kind of chill a little bit and just enjoy this, just go with the flow. There's, there's not this sense of great urgency or stress. It is, it's a lovely energy, to be honest. It's very peaceful and it's um, harmonious, as I already said. Four of Swords, there is still some healing and you see with this four of swords card the little critter i think it's a rabbit is sleeping in the middle of the four swords so this kind of is saying that the healing is not yet done in some way this could be something that this person still needs to recover a little bit from um maybe even just mentally they might just need a bit of a break uh not from you i would say i don't because especially we have the page of ones if it talks about the communication element again and um flirtatious communication at that and, and like having a good time but they might just need a bit of time to compress um the temperance card also talks about the element of healing um I just, be, I mean, the, the, we have the Nine of Swords and the Eight of Swords for them. Um, just about how this situation, it's almost like they're going to do it anyway. But it, it is, it has brought up a lot of um, mental, like, they've been put in, in the mental washing machine, if you like, because of this wonderful new start happening. So I've, I'm, what I'm seeing here and what's going to be happening is things are going to start to calm down for them like they will start to um like if they're uh, if they've been in a state of you know high high cortisol levels and uh feeling very erratic it's definitely you guys are going into a time of um more peaceful time and a bit of an easier going time uh let me just see anything else what's going to be happening between saji and this person going forward Anything else to add? Six of Cups. I mean, that is... Well, uh, oh, I don't think you're going to be able to see it on the, my camera, but it says the word harmony. <laughs> so I do... Yeah, definitely. Six of Cups can talk about reconciliation, but it doesn't mean that this is necessarily someone from your past, although it could be. I'm not seeing any aces, to be fair, except for the bottom of the first deck. So, yeah, this this could be someone that you know already, who you wanted to step up and take action. But again, I'm not getting any element of anyone toxic, any any horrible ex that you don't... This is someone that you have been trying to manifest them taking this leap towards you. So the Six of Cups could just talk about the fact that there is this strong connection between the two of you and you guys are coming back together in a very harmonious way. Um, it's like there was something like a fly in the ointment, the fly's been taken out, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a little bit of time to kind of purify that ointment again and rebalance the ingredients so that it's, um, it's nice and smooth. But that looks like it's, that's what's going to be happening. Anything else for Saji? Oh my goodness. Um, the Ten of Cups. And at the bottom of the deck is the Four of Wands. Very positive. I'm not surprised. Not surprised at all. But yeah, a lot of happiness, contentment. I think it's just going to be like peaceful, enjoying each other's company, enjoying talking to each other, and like also celebrating the fact that you got through the choppiness of this and um yeah it's looking really good so that's what i've got for you this time i really hope you enjoyed it i hope it was useful for someone out there thank you so much for watching if you haven't already please do hit the thumbs up button for me it means the world it really helps the video circulate and if you haven't subscribed yet please do i would love to have you i would recommend hitting the notification bell so you know when i put a video up and if it resonated or you enjoyed it please leave me a comment and let me know i'd love to love to see your very sweet comments and I wish you all my best. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.